OG and Anobi coming back, coming back early. I think we're roughly five weeks after his surgery. So he beat the timetable to get back on the floor and he looked very good in his debut there. Uh, Knicks obviously beating the Sixers handily. Ananobi kind of sliding in as easily as he did in his first game as a Nick after the trade, just looking very comfortable and being very impactful. And now the Knicks should have OG Ananobi back for this stretch run. So I want to start CP there with Ananobi and how different this club looks when he is on the floor. What are you seeing? Yeah, Ian, the, the vibes were indeed immaculate last night in the Knicks win over the Sixers and OG Ananobi's return. Uh, he was everything that the Knicks missed. They, in, immediately in the first quarter, he dives onto the floor, gets a deflection, causes a loose ball, and the Knicks get the ball. He jumps into the passing lane, gets a steal, and he dunks the ball. Later on in the evening, he's taking Tyrese Maxey out of the game. I mean, the numbers when OG Ananobi plays for the Knicks are just staggering. Plus 28 last night, uh, plus 280 in his 15 games with the Knicks. And what's most impressive Impressive is that teams are shooting minus 9.1% less in terms of effective field goal percentage when OG Ananobi's out there on the court. And then offensively, he goes two for five from downtown. He's a corner three-point shooter that this offense can rely upon. Uh, overall, six of 11 from the field. So he's providing that e efficiency on the offensive end as well. You saw some shot creation ability from OG. And, and so the Knicks have just been dominant when he, when he plays. That's CP, I didn't know you turned into Kevin Pelton on us. I like it, man. Thank you for bringing the numbers. Well, I'm uh, in the class research today. So, yeah. <laughs> Bobby, we're, I think we're roughly 10 weeks from the deal um, with Toronto getting RJ Barrett, Emmanuel quickly, and a, a valuable second rounder. Nick's getting back Precious Achua, Malachi Flynn, and obviously OG. How do you assess that move so far, and what have you thought about OG's impact? Well, listen, it's it's been a win-win, I, I think, certainly for both teams. I know Toronto was going in a different direction, um, building more with younger players and, and um, kind of stay, taking a little bit of a step back. I think you saw before OG got injured and Julius Randle got injured that this New York team is a top three team, one healthy um, in the Eastern Conference. I think they can compete against uh, Boston. They can compete against Milwaukee. Um, certainly Miami, some of the other teams. Now it's just a matter of getting Julius back and, and getting to the stretch run in one piece. I remember when the trade happened on, on December 30th and I, I had done my video and I said, you know, the, don't disregard Precious Achua as far as what New York is getting and don't think it's just a throw in here. And I said, when before Toronto got Yaka Pirtle last year at at the deadline, he had been playing really good basketball in Toronto and his minutes started to come down. And I thought he was good in Toronto before then. And, and you've seen uh, firsthand based on probably more of an emergency based on the injuries here. He has a lot of value to the Knicks here. Now, when you get to the playoffs and Tibbs shorten his rotation to eight guys, how does he fit in? That's to be, that's the big um, uh, unknown here, but um, I, I think it's you know certainly a set New York up for the for the future as far as with uh, OG and Jalen and um, you've got to figure out what the, what some of your other free agent moves and then the Bogdanovich and Burks trade kind of it you know it helped because of the timing the timing if you didn't have those two guys you know I don't know where this I don't know where they would be and I know what, eight and ten I think when when with with the mash unit that they they had and everything but you just look at you look at the difference of month, of Sunday night, you know, the, um, the the game that probably none of us will ever watch again um, compared to uh, Tuesday night. Last night was a playoff game. I think, if, you know, for, at least for New York, I felt like they treated it like a playoff game. Get off the 26-14, boom, right off the bat, right? Like, you know, kind of imposed their, um, imposed, imposed their will on them. Oh.